Oh, phone's ringing. Oh, it's Nicola Hume. Where are you? Um, I'm currently on the Range Rover launch. Oh, nice. What the evoke? No, no, the Range Rover. Oh, yeah, the uh, Valar. Nice. No, 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 the Range Rover. Oh, the Sport? Sorry, yeah, no, it's the Sport. Yeah. No, 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 it's, it's the Range Rover. One of the most common questions I'm asked is, money no object, which car would I buy? And I always tend to give the same answer, I'd buy myself a Range Rover. Now, the car I'm in right now is the fifth generation Range Rover, it's the all new Range Rover. Will I still give the same answer to that same question? Well, that's what I'm gonna find out today. But I thought, rather than me tell you about the car, first I've got a VIP sitting in the back. I've got Mr. Nick Collins. Uh, Nick is Executive Director of Vehicle Programs. He's in charge of all the vehicle programs. He's been playing a major part in this car, getting it to market. So just tell me first off, Nick, how important is this car for, for Jaguar Land Rover? Well, it's crucially important. It's the halo of all of our range. Yeah, as you said a few minutes ago, it's the fifth generation. You know, it really defines the top of our portfolio. It's a massive global success and you can really underestimate how important it is to the whole business. And, and really, I guess this is everything you guys know about cars in a car, is that fair to say? Yeah, it really is. It's the absolute latest in all of our technology, both from an engineering perspective and also a manufacturing technology perspective. It's all new from the ground up. It's a massive commitment um, to our UK engineering, our UK manufacturing in Solihull as well and really showcases the, the very best of what we can do as a company. And what do you think the, the tech highlights are? It's an all new platform, isn't it? MLA Flex, which is, is gonna be electrified as well. But what are, what are the other highlights tech-wise of, uh, of this car? Well, whenever we set out to do a Range Rover, we always go with the mantra of don't change it, just make it better. You know, it's an all new architecture. It's incredibly stiff body. It's over 35% stiffer than the outgoing car. You know, that gives you amazing refinement. And, you know, we're having a lovely whisper-free journey here and, and, and able to chat very easily uh, within the car. Things have changed a lot for, for the Range Rover and Range Rover market. This is the, the fifth generation, as we've said. There's a lot more competition now. There's a lot of people who want a slice of your pie. What does the Range Rover give you that, uh, let's name names, Bentley Bentayga, Rolls-Royce Cullinan, even Lamborghini Urus. What does the Range Rover give you that those cars don't? Well, you've, you've always got that go anywhere capability that's inherent in the Range Rover brand. You know, it's, a, it's an iconic silhouette. You can't mistake it for anything else. It's amazingly comfortable. It's amazingly actually accessible compared to some of those other brands as well. It's the jack of all trades. It's the ability to do everything. That's what you get with a Range Rover. I've got one more question for you, Nick. How's me driving? It's pretty good. You know, I'm going to enjoy this next hour and a quarter. I may even have a little kip. If you can get us back to the hotel for dinner, that'd be lovely. Oh, I'll do my best, but you've got to listen to my music, I'm afraid, so good luck with that. Now it's time to tell you about the new Range Rover. Um, is it any good? Well, yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's, it's bloody good, actually. Uh, I've really enjoyed driving this car. I've driven lots and lots of miles today and in different sorts of roads and it's really impressed me. Uh, there's loads of technology in this car, but first let's start with the engine. Slightly unusual. I'm driving a, whisper it, a diesel. Yes, a diesel. So the D350, it's a, a three liter ingenium diesel engine. I think it's around 350 horsepower, 700 Newton meters of torque. That all means it is quick. Oh, oh, oh is it quick, Not to 60 and around five and a half seconds or thereabouts, and still claims of uh, 37 mpg. Now, there is still a place for diesel because this diesel is actually not only quick, but it's super quiet and it's refined and it makes you think, well, what's wrong with diesel in the first place? I know diesel is a dirty word for some, but in this car, it really rather suits it. I really, really like it. You can, of course, have a petrol engine, the P400, again, a, a three liter petrol engine. Uh, there's a V8. Um, there's also coming soon a plug-in hybrid, which I think is gonna be really rather good. And, and at some stage, an all electric Range Rover. This car really is absolutely loaded with technology. Now, one thing 
that I'm going to mention here, which you don't think you're going to notice, but you really do, is four wheel steering. Now, driving down this sort of road, then you know, you're not going to really notice it that much, but it just kind of gives the Range Rover a poise that the Range Rover has never, ever had. Yes, yes, if you're in a car park, it means the car is more maneuverable. Apparently, it's got the same turning circle as a Mini Cooper, uh, about 11 meters, but just going into corners, you know, you can put the car on the apex of the corner. It's not a sports car, I'm talking about apexes. It's not a sports car, but it's enjoyable and it just makes it slightly easier and, and more relaxing to drive. And that's what this car is all about, being relaxed. And these seats are also clad in, in PU, don't call it polyurethane, PU and Kvadrat. So this is vegan friendly, it's sustainable. It's warm, you can cool the seats and everything else, but it, it just does feel premium. So that is something that's impressed me. As well as all the uh, twisty stuff on PCH in Northern California up here and on the highways and freeways. Yes, we are off road. And as you'd expect, the Range Rover just takes everything in its stride. The technology plays a big part here. You've got terrain response system here, which you can just leave in, in automatic. And frankly, the car will probably look after itself, but there's so much tech here. It's, it, it really is very, very clever. And I'm gonna take you on a, a weird analogy here. You know what it's like when you go on holiday and you think, I'm gonna go pony trekking. I've never been on a horse before, but I'm gonna go pony trekking. And the ponies just kind of do it for you. You just sit there and, and let the ponies do the work and you think, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty cool horseman. But really, it's the pony doing the work for you because it's what it does every day. This car's the pony. It just does everything for you. It'll even go up a hill without having to use the, the pedals. It will come down a hill, it's all in control. You just have to steer, you don't have to use the pedals. Technology is turning us into fantastic off-roaders. But this car's ability, <laughs> honestly, you're like in that most comfortable place of yours, almost as comfortable as your own bed, a luxury living room going ridiculous hills and it's like the pony yep it's the pony but it doesn't leave you with a sore bum quality and the style in here i would say is modern british 13.1 inch screen not everything's on the screen you'll be pleased to know there are separate heater controls for you to use I kind of think that maybe the screen could be a little bit bigger, but then I'm a geek. I like what Tesla do with the screens, but hey, I will put some money on the fact that this screen will get bigger at some stage. 13.1 inch for the moment, you get them in the back as well. Now, talking about the back, you can have seven seats in this. In a normal second row seat, plenty of space as before. And of course, there is a long wheelbase version. There's the SV version as well by Special Vehicle Operations, the really luxury version. The ride comfort is really good, generally really quiet. It's so quiet, in fact, that one of the issues I've had with the car is wind noise around these fairly chunky mirrors at the side. Uh, I noticed it when I was sitting in the back of the car last night. I've noticed it today. Of course, the guys from Land Rover said, it's windy, it's windy in California. Not going through the tunnel that I was going through. But as I said, it's probably more noticeable because the car is just so, so quiet. So that's all good. Um, let's just have a walk around outside, shall we? This car is all about reductionism. It's the R word. So taking stuff off the car that you don't really need, a very clean front end, slim lights. There are millions of little mirrors in these lights. And similarly down the side, they've taken lots of lines off this car. So they're just very slight creases there. And what you call vents or gills or whatever, they used to be slightly bigger in the old car. Uh, and these door handles, they go in so it's nice and flush. You've got this sort of black section at the bottom, which I think might be hinting at the EVs. You get that in a lot of EVs because that's where the batteries go. Uh, and then uh, around the back, it's a bit special as well. This is actually my favorite bit of the car at the back here. It's all traditionally Range Rover, but I think it looks more different. You've still got the bustle there and the, the split tailgate, but you've got these really cool, slim, 
LED lights that are hidden until lit. I think the back looks really, really upmarket and very different. Really like that. So that only leaves one question left. Somebody comes up to me now and says, you've got any money you want, what car would you buy? Would it be the Range Rover? Yes, it would. I love this car. All I need now is the money.